So our presentation is on cancel and woke culture. And to start it off, we start off with a few definitions of what is cancel culture first. And so cancel culture can be described by the act of canceling something or someone more likely. And to cancel is to remove the valid validity of something or to remove support from a cause or person. And normally it's very public and normally it happens on social media or something similar to that. And this act of canceling becomes cancel culture when it's practiced in a large way to exert social pressure or show a large group's public disapproval. So depending on your platform or popularity, being canceled can ruin your image either publicly or privately and sometimes even both. So inversely, woke culture is used to describe being woke, and that is basically to be aware to social issues, and it's typically things such as racism, discrimination, sexism, and to be woke is to be socially aware and to have a set of beliefs that you will defend typically publicly, and this, the closest thing that we already know about would be political correctness, basically. And so a big point that ties these two things together is that if something goes against what someone else thinks is woke, then it's likely that they're gonna be canceled. So the issue with these, both cancel and woke culture have sprung from the idea of political correctness, which I think everybody can agree that is not a bad thing, but they've evolved to create a warped and dangerous perception of the world for those that practice these ideas. So political correctness basically just preaches tolerance and respect, and most people can agree with that, and most people agree political correctness is a good thing. But when it comes to woke and cancel culture, they create lenses for people to see culture through. So people will dub something as racist or xenophobic or sexist, even if it's not, but that's just because of the lenses that they have been trained to look through. So a worrying point that these cultures create is that they're actually creating a culture of censorship. People will be canceled if their ideas don't fit into a woke audience's idea of what is right. So they'll only say what they think is acceptable for this audience. So it creates a culture in which people can't really say what they wanna say or what they believe because then their career and their livelihood is at stake because of these cultures. So another big downside of these ideas is the aftermath. A lot of people have been canceled and their careers have been ruined because of cancel and woke culture. And even in cases where someone is innocent of what they've been accused of or really a good person and something was just taken incorrectly, the damage is already done and their public image has already been ruined by the time the good parts of them come out to the public. So a couple of real world examples uh, that I came up with that we found through research. So a couple of examples of cancel culture could come from the cases with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, as well as some of the online posts of J.K. Rowling and Maya Forstater. And so both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard have taken each other to court and all these claims of abuse or this and this and this. And so far, none of it has been proven. They're just now getting into court about it. But Johnny Depp has already been removed from a bunch of movies. His career is basically on a decline. Amber Heard has been re removed from a bunch of movies. Same thing with her. And this is before these claims are even proven. This is before anything has even gone down. This is just because the public is canceling these people. And something similar happened with J.K. Rowling and Maya Forstater. And Maya Forstater basically claimed that there are genetic differences between men and women. And J.K. Rowling was like, she agreed. And there is, and this is all because of the cancel culture. It was just something that this is their beliefs. And that's something that the culture didn't agree with. They thought it wasn't woke. And so they canceled them for it. They said they were transphobic, homophobic, all of these other things, just because they stated their beliefs on a subject. And so some examples of toxic woke culture can come from a speech from Senator Tim Scott, the American Rescue Plan, and Oakland, California's rising poverty and homelessness. So to start, Senator Tim Scott is a black, Republican who grew up in a single parent home from the South. And so he was tasked with the job, I think maybe last year of he had to address President Biden after he had called for a joint Congress. And so Tim Scott was uh, whatever the whole political charade they have to do. But basically at one point in his speech, he was going against the claims that systemic racism exists in America. And so people took this, the woke culture took this 
as he is just a mouthpiece for white Republicans because there's no way a black man could ever really believe that. And that they, they went against him and they started creating this, uh, there's a trend, they created a hashtag Uncle Tim, which was a play on Uncle Tom, which is extremely racist, but they still were claiming that he was the one being racist because he was going against their ideas. So even though he believed in this and he was a, a black man, he grew up in this all on his own, they still canceled him because they just couldn't accept that he was not woke like they were. And so another example of this comes with the American Rescue Plan in which the execution of this ended up, they were trying to be woke, it seems. And so the American Rescue Plan basically is what it sounds like. They're trying to help people out. But instead of basing it solely on concrete needs of people, there was an entire piece of it that were to focus on the color of the people's skin. So even if you were a white person in way worse poverty than people of color, you were most likely going to be behind them as far as priority goes. And this is similar to Oakland, California. And they have many, many programs about protecting the minorities, protecting people in poverty and all this other stuff. And it's very woke and it sounds very nice on paper and all these other things. But none of these things have actually been enacted effectively. So Oakland's poverty levels are still rising and their homelessness levels are still rising. And it, it's no surprise that it's still the minorities who are being targeted by this, even though they are creating the, this woke culture that everybody is protected and they're going to take care of these minorities and everything. So these are just a couple of examples of this in the real world. And it gives some showing of how it can affect people beyond it and how people's actual acts of talking and how they express themselves can be different. So basically to summarize all of these points, cancel and vote culture have taken the idea of political correctness and weaponized it in a way to create a weapon for their agendas. By looking at the examples and definitions that we have given in this presentation, we believe it becomes clear that these ideas are more toxic than they are helpful. Not only have they created a censored public, they have attacked and picked apart people's opinions simply because they don't fit into the molds that these cultures want them to. Until we tackle and bring to light the broken systems of cancel and woke culture, we as a nation will continue to live in a world of censored thought and judgmental public. Here is sources cited, and that is 